Hello! Perfidious Pete here. Chat, let me know how the audio is. This is our standard new game disclosure. It's Wednesday night. We're playing Battletech for the first time. It seems like it might be just a touch loud. Yeah, you know what? Let's go. Let's go tweak the settings here just a little bit. Audio. This, I will give credit where credit is due. This is one of the few games I've played recently where the first thing I didn't do was turn the volume down to like 10%. Or to whatever the minimum was. Like, we have to turn it down just, like, a little. In fact, that may be too much. You tell me, Chad. Like, this feels... Okay, that feels actually maybe just a touch loud. Let's go down, like, one bit more. There we go. That feels about right. Chat, let me know. We're playing some Battletech. Gonna do one story mission, but it's an early story mission, and other than that, I'm probably gonna play non-story missions. Sounds okay here? Excellent. Thanks, Joe. Just to try and avoid spoilers, I played some Battletech yesterday. Uh, it's real good. I was not expecting much. Initially, I was very hesitant, because I wasn't expecting a whole hell of a lot from Harebrain Schemes. I think they've got kind of a very hit-or-miss track record. But then I found out Paradox was involved, and I was like, oh, well, you know, Paradox is probably going to, you know, they, they won't let him do a bad job. So I watched a little gameplay footage. I started to get a little bit hyped for a couple days before the game came out. Probably like 8 to 10% hype, which for me is a fantastically huge amount of hype. And then I played the game, and it's, it's actually great. It's really, really good. Not a 100% true adaptation of the tabletop game, but for all intents and purposes... It might as well be a conversion to the tabletop game. They didn't get all of the you know, all of the niche stuff, but it's pretty darn close. Feels really good. Let's uh let's get a contract going here. We're in the Bellerophon system. We are on our jump ship or drop ship rather, the Leopold. Is it the Leopold? I actually don't remember the name of my drop ship. The Leopard. Okay. Well, you know, I kind of like the Leopold a little better. It's got that old world Prussian dictator kind of feel. What are we doing here? We have... I don't remember if this is... This is clearly not a story mission because the difficulty is too low and it's in a polar setting. So, polar biome, we can get crazy lunatic heat style. We don't have a whole lot of mechs yet. We're just starting out. I've done, I think, two, maybe three total contracts so far. After the... the you start in with, like, a story beat, and after that, it's uh, all contracts. And I've only done just enough to sort of keep my head above water, try and earn some salvage. What mechs do we have? We've got a spider going that I've refit just a little bit, got rid of some of its 8 trillion jump jets and added a little more firepower. The blackjack that you start the game with, which does not have a fantastic loadout, although it's not terrible. The Vindicator, which is solid. It's one of my all-around favorite mechs. 45-ton mech, good armor, decent weapons. And then we've got a Shadowhawk over here, which has got a shitload of armor and can really take a beating, but its weapon loadout currently is straight-up garbage. It has bad weapons. Decker, you know what? Nah, we don't need you. You get a four gunnery, which is nice. Four piloting. I mean, Decker is evens across the board. He's solid fours, but everybody else down here, as you can see, has upgraded just a little bit, so they're all better than Decker. That's what happens when you get injured on the first mission, dog. Spend your first mission injured, get sat down, then you're never making it back into the starting rotation. We subbed you out, and Scotty Pippen proved himself to be a very effective point guard. Now you're never getting back into the rotation. It's Pippen and Jordan who are going for the three-peat now. And by Pippen, I mean it's, you know, me, Perfidious Pete. Pete, how come you have yourself in your lightest mech? Because I love light mechs, that's why. I'm willing to stake my very life on the awesomeness of the light mech. People are like, Pete the Spider is terrible. I disagree. I think the Spider is very good. Highly maneuverable. Once you up its firepower, throw a little more armor on it, it's actually decent. The variant of the spider they have in the game has like 25 trillion jump jets on it and no armor whatsoever. So yeah, it's actually trash. But with some moderate tweaks, it can be pretty good. Let's take a look at our overall mission objectives here. We got to destroy a Canopian Lance, which means we're just basically, this is a go find guys and kill guys mission. Our pay, 109,800 sea bills. Not a fantastic amount, but we do get a pretty respectable amount of salvage. And we get first pick amongst the salvage. We're going to get a pick one piece, and then we'll get five pieces at random. Darius Oliveira, our XO, who, by the way, does not come down onto planets in mechs because he is a smart man and doesn't want to die. 
I really wish his name was just Darius Rucker, though, so we could make non-stop Hootie and the Blowfish jokes. These guys are amateurs. Got eyes on them. Take them out. Good hunting, Commander. Olivera out. So we're playing our company name here. We're the mercenaries. We're the salt miners or the, I don't, the Lords of Salt, I think, is the name of my mercenary company. I chose that, like, rook-looking banner because it was the closest thing I could find to a salt shaker. I couldn't find anything else that looked more like a salt shaker than that. So I went with that. And here we're about to see the power of the spider. We're going to have him sprint over here towards these trees. See if he can get us a little contact on the enemy. He's fast as hell. Even over rough terrain. And then I think we'll take the rest of the lance just right up the old gut here. We'll have everybody sprint. Sprinting does, I believe, generate a tiny bit of heat. But all of our mechs should be able to dissipate well more than they're going to generate by sprinting. Who's faster? Vindicator's a little quicker. This Vindicator also has some jump jets. We have an enemy contact. All right, so there is either a... Okay, something unknown over there. Could be a vehicle, could be a mech. Get your ass up there, Blackjack. You're slow enough. That's my main objection with the Blackjack. It's too slow. Battle rule! Yes, we are going into battle. Battle rule. More hostile. So we got a mech. All right. And what's, what's your little friend? So there's a Locust. Locust, tiny but fast. Very, it's evasive, guarded, and entrenched. Do we want to have myself reserve? You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and go... I didn't... I want to reserve, though. Can I still reserve? I'm going to go ahead and reserve myself here. Even if this Locust runs up and takes a shot at us, he's going to be taking a shot at one of our heaviest mechs, and Locusts don't exactly pack a lot of firepower. I want to wait for... We could go for the Alpha Strike, though. If, if we were to decide to get a little bit closer and shoot, how much closer do we have to be? We can actually just shoot from here. What are our hit percentages like? Not good because the Locust is greasy fast. Does your heaviest mech have a weight issue? He could try diet and exercise. His weight issue is that he's not heavy enough. We need him to be like the sumo wrestler guy from The Replacements and that we need him to eat eggs before the game so we can bulk up. We could upgrade our... We could upgrade our chance to hit by precision striking, but for a Locust... It really feels like the best way to do this is just start shooting at him and chip away at his evasive. So evasive mechanic, the faster you move, you gain points of evasive, gives your enemy a penalty to hit you, which is the same as it is in the tabletop game. The only difference is in this game, the more often you get shot at, the every time you get shot at your evasive, you lose some of that hit bonus, which does not happen in the tabletop game. In the tabletop game, you're as hard to hit as you are to hit. Some of these missiles are going to land. So he has lost one evasion, which means every subsequent attack we make at that enemy will be much easier. And there's some manner of what appears to be a tank over there as well. Poseidon, thanks for the nickel. I appreciate I it. Hear ya. Cheer me on as we triumph to victory. So this, this is a good mech. I really like the Vindicator. It's possibly our best mech. I actually want my Vindicator to shoot last, though. But let's have our Shadow Hawk come over here. Or our Blackjack, rather. Got Blackjack's got a couple auto cannons, got some reasonable distance weapons. We're going to see if we can have him put some shots on the Locust. And again, mostly what we're doing here is we're just looking to chew up some of his evasive. Everything is out of range except for the AC2s, which is fine. We'll fire two of those at him. The shot. AC2, also possibly one of the shittiest weapons yeah. in Battletech. Just putting that out there. It's heavy. It also has ammo, which is prone to exploding. Good to go. Takes a lot of critical spots. Where's optimal range for IP? I don't want to be in range of that tank. We're going to just play very you calm here. That. Glitch is one of our best shooters. She does have our highest gunnery, so she's going to have the best chance to hit. 65 for the PPC, 60 for the LRM. Fire it up. If that PPC hits, yep. The PPC hit. We blew off one of his arms, and then we got old Pete up here in the uh, in the spider. You know what, Pete? If we have Pete reserve, he would get to go twice in a row. Actually, he's gonna get to go twice in a row now. I wonder if we sprint. 
If we can make it to the... You know what? We're going to try it. Let's see if we can go back to back. I think we can do it. I want to see if I can go kick that tank. He's going to be supremely hard to hit because of his velocity. So even if the locust gets a shot at him, we're going to be okay. Take some shots at your mom while you're at it. I mean, I think I've taken enough shots at your mom in my day. <laughs> no hits. The spider remains undamaged. So that tank was doing some indirect fire with an LRM. And we should be able to go. Now, I could go take more shots at that locust. Or I could go and kick the shit out of that tank and almost certainly kill it. We're definitely going to want to go. We could also just go kick the locust. Kicking the locust might not kill it. Now, you know what? We should go kick them. Let's go kick the locust. Yeah, kick him. Kick him. This is going to do a shitload of damage. We got two small lasers that are chipping in. And this is what I changed a little bit on our mech. I gave him some small lasers to actually make his melee more effective. We should be able to just punch. Oh, we're going to punch it. We missed the punch, though. Unbelievable. We missed a melee attack. That's the first time I've missed melee. He's going to shoot us in the back, almost certainly. Oh, running like hell because we blew his arm off. Taking a laser shot at our Shadow Hawk. One medium laser to our Shadow Hawk's right arm is not going to affect it at all. But now we got to have somebody kill this tank. Glitch, if Glitch can hit it, she'll get him. We need a place where she has line of sight. Right there is the best we can do. All right. If Glitch can get a PPPC shot at the tank, it will explode. It's going to blow up bigger than Kanye. And let's face it, Kanye's blown up pretty big these days. Got a medium laser we can bring on to. All right, that's fine. This will destroy Got that it. tank. Yep. Probably didn't need the LRMs, but I was just adding a little extra oomph in case the PPC missed. So this lance consists of four things and two of them, three of them are vehicles. It's a locust and three tanks. That's the whole lance. We have so much overkill for this shit, though. This should not be a contract I'm allowed to take. This is morbidly unfair. Okay, Medusa. You don't have multi-target, so your LRM is likely going to go unused here. It'll save us a little bit of heat to not fire it. We're not going to need it. This locust is very evasive, though. Yeah, don't fire the LRM. We don't need to waste the ammo. Also, the AC-5 is a terrible chance to hit, too. You know what? Just hit, yeah, medium laser and some SRMs. He's already pretty wrecked. We criticaled his machine gun. We're mostly concerned Heavy damage. with just taking away some of his evasion so that our subsequent later shots can hit him. Behemoth. What's up, Doc? I, you know, you have a, I just noticed Behemoth, but, like, you have a very not nice nickname, though. Calling the lady behemoth? That seems, uh... I'm just playing against the AI, Silk. So. Just a little... We're, we're playing some of the campaign. Doing a little, uh, just a skirmish mission on the campaign here. Do we need to fire everything? I mean, why not? It's a bunch of extra heat. Yeah, but it's also a dead mech, and it took us to our very last shot to bring that locust down. So we used 155 tons and change of mech to bring down, I think, a 20-tonner and three tanks. This is the kind of contract every mech warrior actually dreams of, though, right? We cannot kick the tank. We cannot get to it. We're not fast enough. What if we jump, though? Jumping still does not make us fast enough, but it does give us a little better angle and cover. Cover gives us a little extra damage resistance. We're evasive. We jumped. So we've got maximum hit penalty here. Let's go ahead and attack this tank. We got two medium lasers not close enough to get the smalls on. Two medium lasers is not going to be enough. Which is the better terrible robot fighting movie? Robot jocks or robot war? I mean, they're both pretty terrible. 
I gotta say, robot jocks is worse. A robot, I, I, that's like saying which would you rather eat, a shit burrito or a shit sandwich. I mean, either way, you're eating shit, but... When it comes to shit burrito or shit sandwich, usually I will pick the burrito just because I'm a fan of burritos. What can I say? They've got the superior wrapping. They really do. I read you, Commander. Moving out. We are so gross. These guys are so outclassed, though. It's not even funny. So we're going to go with our multi-target. Glitch has an ability she can use more than one target. We'll designate this tank as our primary target. This tank as our secondary target. We're going to fire the LRM-5 over the mountain at that galleon. If the PPC hits, this striker will just explode. Yeah, there you go. Robot Jocks used to be one of my favorites simply because it was there. And there goes the rest of that tank. Yeah, this mission was actually a joke. I can't believe they paid us for this. A milk run, just as we expected. Good work, Commander. Well, the salvage ain't gonna be great, though. I mostly did this mission trying to get some salvage. I actually took a penalty to the, like, sea bill payout in favor of salvage. And we're not gonna be able to salvage shit. Like, we might be able to salvage part of a locust. Nobody was hurt. I'm not sure anybody even got hit. Oh, I guess our Shadow Hawk got shot in the arm once. And that's it. So we'll take the Locust. We got a part of a Locust 1v. Is that what we want, though? Would we rather maybe not have... Medium lasers or LRM 10s are... Uh, ugh, an SRM 6, though, actually is pretty good. Nah, it's fine. What did we get? We got the SRM 6 anyway on the random. We also got a bunch of extra small lasers and some SRM ammo. That's good. SRM 6s are fantastic. Great weapon. Pound for pound, possibly the best weapon in all of Battletech. Good damage, reasonably sized, excellent heat efficiency. The SRM 6 is the Cadillac of missile launchers. We're sitting pretty. Almost a million sea bills. Actually, we're, like, cripplingly in debt. That's the storyline so far. Your beginning storyline here for the campaign for the Lords of Salt. We're in debt up to our eyeballs. Loan sharks and mobsters have a catastrophic lean against our dropship, and we're just trying to figure out how to make enough money so that some guy doesn't show up at the door with a baseball bat. His name's probably, like, Philly the Fish. And be like, hey, uh, sorry there, Pete, but uh, I'm going to have to break your knees. You know, you, you used the jump ship one too many times there, and uh, Big Jimmy needs his money, and I can't help but notice you didn't give Big Jimmy his money, so I'm going to need your kneecaps. Pete, you live in a spaceship. How's he going to show up at the door? I'm assuming the mob is in... They're innovative. They're creative. They'll find a way. They can send their bag men to come knocking at the door of your ship. So let's keep uh, Philly the Fish at bay here. Let's go see what we can do for more contracts, which is in the command center. What do we got? We do have a storyline contract, which I think maybe we'll do that one. If you get a mech that punches, name that guy after me. Robot Jock style persona. I'm actually driving my melee mech right now. That's the Pete mech. I love melee. We could go hit a supply base. That mission actually has pretty pretty good salvage. I think we'll do this priority mission, though. It's 33,000 sea bills, which ain't much, but... All we have to do is go talk to somebody. I don't think we actually have to fight anything because it has zero for salvage. So let's go see what our mystery client... And if you're worried about spoilers, chat, check out and come back in like five or, you know. If you don't want any spoilers, you should avoid this part. This is a storyline mission. I'm going to try and keep this to a minimum, but I'm sort of at a point where I have to do this mission. Anna Maria Centrella. Mr. Oliveira. How come you don't talk to me, Pete? Why are you always talking to my XO? This would be like if somebody hailed the Enterprise, but they only talked to Riker, and they just, like, categorically refused to acknowledge Picard's presence. Excuse me, I'm the man who says engage and make it so. You talk to me. Anna Maria Centrella, you've heard of my family, I'm sure. Lady Centrella, this is a surprise. Uh, we gotta give Oliveira a voice. Lady Centrella, this is a surprise. Wouldn't expect a member of the Canopian royal family to even know who we are, let alone approach us in such a non-traditional manner. I'm going for kind of a Ving Rhames thing, but I'm fucking it up. This isn't a traditional contract, and I don't need Comstar asking questions. I do like one thing where they're doing here in the game. Every This is a sort of a Paradox Interactive kind of hallmark, kind of a trademark. When they want to give you backstory... 
And this is something that Harebrained Schemes has struggled with, because typically when they want to do a little world building, they just get, take a giant bolus of story and fucking cram it down your throat. Like you got an eating disorder and you weigh 67 pounds and you're in a hospital and they'll be like, well, if you won't eat, we're going to force you to eat it. This is a much more subtle and innovative way to do it. Paradox has a better handle on this. Let me decide whether or not I want to know more about Comstar. If I want to know about Comstar, I can just mouse over them and they give us a little bit of story. This is how you build a world right here. Also, I'm assuming they did this because... People are familiar enough with the Battletech IP that probably a lot of the people that are going to be playing this game know most of the story already. Ving Rhames had the Ving Rhames thing going for a bunch of years, but then he fucked it up. What's he up to these days? I actually think Ving Rhames officially retired a number of years ago, actually. He was just like, I have enough money. I'm good. Thanks. This isn't a traditional contract. Now need comp star asking questions. Besides, there's no reason to involve the Versionary Review Board. I already know that I want to hire you. Have I piqued your interest, Commander Pete? Oh, now you address me? You've been cold-shouldering me this whole time, and suddenly now you come to the decision-maker? You know what, Lady Centrella? I'm gonna let you stew for a minute. Put her on mute, Olivera. Did, did you mute it, though? No? She's open mic, huh? You know, Olivera, that when I make the little slashing at the neck motion with my hand thing, that means you're supposed to cut comms kind of under you know what it never mind you've completely undermined it. certainly lady citrella we wouldn't be here if you have just yeah i you know some issues with my subordinates over here anna maria we'll get that like work out the hand gesture thing later i'm pleased to hear it the job that i have for you is a relatively simple one i need you to recover something for me and i need it done quietly in exchange for your services, I will pay down the interest on your rather sizable loans and buy you the breathing room you've been looking for. How do you know about it? You know what? It doesn't matter. Let's just, uh, just tell us what we're supposed to be recovering. This. Please tell me she's motioning to her crotch, though. Be like, what are we supposed to be recovering? You're gonna recover this! Please be crotch chopping below frame. Crotch, God... I was hoping, chat, but once again... Lady Centrella's image is replaced on the screen by a grainy photograph of an enormous grounded dropship. Ramshackle structures cling to it like barnacles. She's a derelict vessel, an Argo. Don't talk about your vagina that way. Just because it's been a while since you've seen some action, Anna Maria, doesn't mean it's a derelict girl. I'm sure it's still got the goods. One of only two ever made. Well, now, I mean, you know, like fully half the populace is a sport in one of those pieces of equipment. So I don't think you can say it's one of only two ever made. But wait, do you have a twin sister? Is that what this is? Are you inviting me into a menage a trois? Because I kind of like your look, girl. I think I may be down. For over 200 years, she's been lying in state on Axelus. Okay, so, yep, that's exactly what it is. She's saying, yeah, it's been 200 years since I've gotten any action. Somebody's got to hook a sister up. Please come rescue my derelict vessel. Pirate moon in the heart of the frontier. I want her and you're going to bring her to me. <sighs> Yang. Yeah, and how exactly are we supposed to do that? I mean, this is a big ship and she looks half cannibalized for parts. Look, you can see her ribs in the photo. Don't talk about her sister like that. So, did we not just talk about the eating disorder? That's very discourteous, Vertana. She's heroin chic, by the way. She could be a runway model anywhere in the world. I'm as enthusiastic about money as the next guy, but I'm a mech tech, not an aerospace engineer. I'll be damned if I can get that thing flying again. Wow, this guy has a very low self-esteem. He's got some confidence issues. He'd be like, sorry, I can only fix giant fighting robots when it comes to dropships. I got nothing. Relax, Mr. Vertanen. I have engineering staff on hand to attend the Argo. Their leader, Dr. Farah Murad, has, been quite a repu has built quite a reputation for herself in the frontier. If she wanted some action, I doubt even a 200-year dry spell would make her desperate enough to come to you, Pete. You know you make a valid point. You'll find a jump ship waiting for you at Alloway. We'll carry you to the pirate moon where you'll clear a path to the crash site. Dr. Murad and her team will go to work on the derelict and you'll protect them until the work is done. This should all be well within your capabilities, Commander Pete, unless I've come to the wrong company, of course. So we've got a couple options here. Uh, I used to be a merchant guard back in my day. That's, they allow you to build a bit of a backstory so you can kind of decide what your origins are and then you get to conversation options based on those origins. 
I'm no stranger to protecting non-combatants. This job's well within our wheelhouse. Let's go with that one. Then I can see no reason why you shouldn't accept my offer. Do the job well enough and there'll be more work waiting for you upon your return. Mr. Oliveira, you will never find you a better opportunity than what I'm offering. Commander Pete, I can promise you that. She isn't wrong, Perfidious. We were looking for a lifeline, and I think this is as close as we're gonna get. Alright, you know what, lady? You got yourself some mercenaries. Very good. I'll forward your contract to Mr. Oliveira. Your reputation is well known within the magistracy, Commander Pete. I hope that you live up to it. You know, times have changed. I'm actually, I've become hardened and embittered, lady. The only thing that uh, moves me at this point is the promise of cold, hard cash. I have no loyalties. I'm 100% embrace the mercenary sensibilities. I will sell you my grandmother if the price is right. Although, be forewarned, Pete's granny don't come cheap. She's a classy lady. So we're supposed to do, shouldn't we just be able to launch this contract? Commander. Or do we have to go pick up the contract? We have to pick up the contract. Let's take this price. It pays $1.1 million, though, and has a monstrously huge amount of salvage. So this is more money than any other 10 contracts I've seen. All right. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. Contract includes travel to Alloway. Yeah, I'm 100% okay with that for what's like, let's look at the next biggest competing contract. It's not even one-tenth of the payout. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and go then. We're just going to go. Hey, Delona, what's up? Silk got himself a nice Silk Monkey emote. Looks good, Silk. Looks good. We jump in. Yes, indeed. We j Extension. Banging noises draw you to the shared mech warrior barracks where you find Behemoth disassembling one of the leopard's internal walls. There are already several panels neatly stacked beside her. She pauses, then explains, There's a few cubic meters of dead space back here. I'm making room so we can stretch without hitting the bunks. As reasonable as it sounds, the banks are going to like you modifying their property. You know what? Fuck the banks. I don't care. Set aside money to pay the fine. Order Behemoth to put the wall back where it was. You know what? We're about to be rolling in swag. I can afford 20 grand. I'll just pay the fine. Why have the money if you can't enjoy spending it? That's like purposely running a stop sign in front of the cop when it's raining. Like, this is a great way to spend money, by the way. Wait until it's like just fucking pouring down rain and then commit a minor traffic offense just so you can make the cop get out of his car. He'll be like, you know, you ran that stop sign back there. And he'll be like, yeah, you know, I did run that stop sign. You're going to have to write me a citation, sir. Terribly, terribly sorry. Why don't you go ahead and stand there and write that ticket out and uh, I'll just be in my car where it's dry. <laughs> so we lost 20 grand, but we increased our morale by one. I don't know specifically how morale works. You do have some abilities that are like morale based. We did take that contract, right? Did we not? Yeah, like. Yeah, yeah we did. Okay, we took it. Back to the leopard then. Continue traveling. We out. I have one sub and it was glorious the first time somebody else used the... Yeah, it is pretty cool when you see somebody use your emote. Also, you guys should go sub to Silk. I do wish I um, did say the traveling was a little quicker. I mean, understand the time is passing and that's relevant because you can do things like repair max, refit max. If you have injured individuals, they will heal while time travel is going on. But while you're in between systems like that, where there's really nothing to do. I mean, if I can pause it whenever I want, it could go a little quicker. We've arrived at Alloway, Commander. Ready to proceed with our current contract? Yes. Yes, we are in fact ready. Let's do it. Commander, I'm setting course for Lady Centrella's jump ship. It's strange, though. This moon it's taking us to... Oh, this moon it's taking us to, Axelus, doesn't appear on any of my maps, which leads me to wonder where exactly are we going and how do they intend to get us there? This moon doesn't appear on any of your maps, huh? That's no moon, Chad. It's a space station. 
several hours later in uncharted space. I mean, we knew it was uncharted because the lady told us it wasn't on the chart before we went there, so... Holy shit, Pickles, was that Technically, isn't it charted space now that we've been there? Joe XL, thanks very much for the subscription. Five months in a row for Joe. He's almost a Twitch baby. Five nights of the way there. A non-reducible fraction. We couldn't... You know what? It would be, at this point, it would be illegal to terminate the pregnancy, Joe. Thanks for subbing. Get some stabbies in chat for Joe. Also, good time to remind y'all, um, we are doing some giveaways in the month of April. If you're a subscribed to the channel in the month of April, you got your chance at winning some free swag. We're going to be doing our giveaway actually on Friday, the 27th of April. Friday's stream is the giveaway stream, so make sure and come by. Get yourself a shot at some swag. That was one hell of a rough ride. My stomach is still doing somersaults. It was smooth as shit, you baby. We just flew here. Our navigator's name is Sumira. That's because those crazy bastards use a pirate point. What's a pirate point? A pirate jump point. Non-standard jump points that exist inside a system's proximity limit. Pirate jump points, or pirate points for short, are hellishly difficult to navigate because they tend to be much smaller than the standard jump points and are also subject to the effects of planetary gravitation. As a result, the odds of suffering a missed jump when attempting to use a pirate point are high. If we'd suffered a missed jump, a sour stomach would be the least of your concerns. A leopard could have gotten irreparably mangled. Hell, we could have been irreparably mangled. Uh, yeah, you know, I gotta side with Sumira on this one, because my whole family was killed in a jump drive accident. That's actually my backstory. My whole family died. Cautionary holovids, they showed us the academy where the stuff of nightmares. Blood on the jump point. The Sumira Meyer story. When exactly did you realize what Centrella's jump ship crew was planning on doing? Uh, yeah, I'd kind of like to know because, again, the whole family was killed. Yeah, thanks for bringing me this. I was we're on our approach to dock with jump ship. It was way out of position to use any legitimate jump ship. Putting two and two together, I could guess at what they were going to do. Yeah, the next time this happens, you tell me about it before we jump. I'd rather eat a bullet than go out the way my parents did. Yes, Commander, of course. Sorry. I forgot about your tragic backstory, sir. Paradox crew as well. Look at this racially diverse crew. It's the future, chat. It's the future. The melding of the races has completed. We're all just one homogenous... That's not true. Though. And to be... Ultimately, that's probably the way it's going to go, and that humans will sort of blend out and we'll all be the mutts nature intended us to be. But uh, that's actually not the story for Battletech. There was like a giant diaspora from Earth and uh, like various cultural and ethnic people sort of colonize their own parts of the galaxy. So it's all very different. Could afford to turn this job down. I thought that given the situation, ignorance was probably bliss. Well, that's true. I mean, I do love to be kept in the dark and fed shit quietly like a mushroom. Darius Oliveira. We'll talk about this later, Maya. But for now, what's done is done. We're here and there's money to be made. Let's focus on a task at hand. The Argo's crash site is here, smack dab in the middle of a pirate stronghold. The ship, the stronghold, and everything around it is belonged to a... Every, oh, everything around it belonged to a self-styled bandit queen called Grim Sybil. A gang is the closest thing that Axilis has to a ruling council. Grim Sybil, is that supposed to be scary? Sounds like the kind of name you'd choose out of a hat. What do their defenses look like? Actually, Grim Sybil sounds sort of like the name you would get if you grew up. What was the name of the mom in Sybil? I don't remember. It sounds like the kind of name you'd have if you grew up getting hit with wire coat hangers a lot. No more wire hangers, Jed. Patchy at best, I don't think the Axilis gets a lot of visitors. They have strong anti-air cover, but little in the way of ground-based defenses. I'm seeing a lot of vehicles, but battle mech activity looks like. Uh, let's define light here. Can't put an exact number on all I have. Surface scans to go on from what data I do have. I expect pirates to be able to feel the full lance of light battle mechs, all of them in poor repair. Mixed reports of something bigger. That'll be Grim Sybil's mech. I don't have any information on tonnage or armament, but given the shape that everything else is on the Axilis, I imagine it's being held together with chewing gum and bailing wire. Do they have bailing wire in space? Do they really need to do a lot of uh, hay bailing in space, especially on a moon? Why would there be bailing wire on a moon? What else do you have on Grim Sybil? 
Yeah, I hadn't either. Centrella's intel says that Grim Sybil mostly stays put on Axillus, but she's got at least a dozen pirate gangs operating under her banner, so she must have something going for her. How goes the mech piloting? So far, Mighty Patapon, we took a mission that was basically us just stomping the shit out of some helpless criminals. It was uh, a lot like taking candy from a baby, but, you know, only if the baby was also handicapped. Sybil's bio was pretty sparse. There isn't a lot of meat here. Just a note that she came up under Lady Paula Treveline, the pirate queen of the Tortuga Dominions. I guess that's impressive, having a personal connection to Lady Death and all. You know what? Let's just, uh, let's just go. Yeah, I don't want to talk to Yang. Lady Death, really? I swear, man, these pirate names are killing me. Are Mech Warrior call signs really any better, though, Yang? Let me think about that one, boss. Pete. No, I guess they're not. I mean, my call sign is actually Pete, though. This... Yang, you're fucking fired. You said that to your boss with great disrespect, I might say. Very clever, wise ass. Now knock it off. Thanks, Sumire. Would you bust him down a rank and demote him? Also, maybe cut his pay? And give him the shitty bunk. Also, he's on latrine duty. What else can we hand out as a military punishment? We've busted him down a rank. We gave him a shitty bunk. We put him on latrine duty. Oh, KP! That motherfucker is peeling potatoes, too. Get him a vegetable peeler and get him down to the galley. Anything else worth mentioning at fire? We'll get back to talking about the mission. Could we just do the mission, though? Looks like Traveline and Sybil had a fallen out. It's not terribly surprising given the Pirate Queen's drag record. Sybil managed to survive somehow. Good on her. She's been living on a Silas ever since. Uh, pirates have vehicles and turrets. Maybe a few battle mechs. Got it. Keep going. We don't need to keep going. Let's just, let's actually go. Are there latrines on a spaceship? Of course there are latrines on a spaceship. Where are you going to take a shit? You got to poop somewhere, Chad. Everybody poops. There's a book about it. You may have read it. Entire structure is surrounded by radar-guided anti-aircraft guns. Your first task will be to take down the radar towers so that Sumira can approach the derelict. After you secure the crash site, she'll dock with the Argo and drop off the engineering team. And then they'll miraculously get a 200-year-old wreck flying again. This guy is such a negative Nancy. You know what? I only want positive and good energy on my bridge, Yang. I'm Also, why are you not in the kitchen right now peeling a vegetable? Hell, you've got that metal arm. It probably doubles as a fucking vegetable peeler. I suppose you could just shit in an airlock. Yeah, but then there's going to be shit all over the floor of the airlock. Even if you blow it out into space, then it's just going to be frozen shit all over the floor of the airlock. And then you're going to be tracking it in and out of the spaceship every time you go in or out the airlock. You could also just poop in a toilet and not be a filthy animal, chat. Lady Centrella has a massive... Oh, this is Darius, sorry. Lady Centrella has a massive stack of sea bills that they will. Oh, Lady Centrella has bet a massive stack of sea bills that they will. For what it's worth, I believe that a chief engineer can pull this off. I've never heard of Dr. Farrah Murad, but I gotta say, she sounds hot. Also, before Lady Centrella mentioned her, but I did some digging after our meeting. She was telling the truth. The doc has quite a reputation. I also found a photo, and the doc is, in fact, smoking hottie. Old Darius is going to be putting on a little light music, maybe putting on some low candlelight, getting a bottle of wine, and trying to romance me one Dr. Farrah Murad, I can assure you. She's also supposed to be some kind of frontier engineer, wonderkind, and a genius at bringing dead ships back to life. Yeah, you know what? That's good enough for me. I'm done talking. Can we go now? I'm glad to hear it, because it's going to have to be. Now that we're here, we're kind of committed to seeing his job through. I leave it to you, Pervidius. Good hunting on the moon's surface. I'll be keeping an eye on you from up here, because unlike you idiots, I'm not dumb enough to put myself in a giant fighting seizure robot. I stay where it's safe and get ready in case y'all die to take the hell off and have myself my very own brand new ship. <laughs> 